Hey, I'm Nick Athlon Gamer. Welcome back to PCM22 Career Mode Episode 68. And it is Amstel Gold. Not a big target or anything, just a race that I think we could do well at. And therefore, we're going to give it our all and see how we compete today. Uh, our favorite is Johannes Peters. He's got a plus four. He's actually expected to have a plus five, so we actually drew a minus one on that one as he has the objective and is set with a fitness peak right now. We gave him a back to back in that department. Gives him a 76 mountain, 83 hills, 82 sprint and acceleration. Uh, Gonzalez has a decent rating with 79 mountain, 76 hills, so he can really support late on. And then Vermark has a 77 mountain, 81 hills today, and good acceleration, good stamina. And then McKellar, also in a similar state, very capable as a sprinter today, 78 mountain, 80 on the hills. So he'll be the other guy to essentially lead out Peters. And like her chances of getting a competitive result. Can we win? Well, it's going to be difficult because there are, I'd say, three or four riders with excellent chance, excellent ratings, and they are the favorites. But with the ratings that we have today, we could potentially win. Uh, but I wouldn't be surprised at all if we only managed to get second, third, fourth, maybe fifth place. Already a sizable gap to the breakaway. Now over six minutes ahead. Only five riders in that break, including Tess and Denz, Barta, Restrepo, and Dokchi has been dropped. That was a fall. That was a fall. That's why he got dropped. But he is two minutes behind. Velens with a puncture off the back as well. But I would imagine he'll regain contact. He does already. Uh, but that guy who got dropped at the front, he's got a long ways to go to get back. A minute and a half now. It's early enough he might get there, but it's going to hurt his race later. And he's not one of the favorites anyway. First solid bit of undulation here with three rolling hills on this one. Right now I'm taking it easy. Just 75 for the upper level. And Peters goes down. Gregoire, Gacchioli also going down. So two of the other favorites. Uh, Garzone. Slow down. And then Peters. Let's see if we can get up and get rolling again here quite early. And we are on the back at that. That is why I do that, folks. That is exactly why I do that. Go and protect. If you fall from the back, you get up minutes behind. If you fall from the front, sometimes you're slightly off the back. Sometimes, like that one, you never even leave the peloton. He remains in the peloton. For the entirety. 180k to go. Let's go ahead and have Garzon get the water since we are already a ways back and are ready for water slot number one of three for the day. 120 and 60 will be the other times we try to target that depending on the undulation at the time. The busiest section is going to be in the middle of this thing. Peter's most way back to the front now. How's he looking? Looking pretty okay. It took a little out of him, but not much. Early enough and pace light enough that uh, he recovered relatively easily. David Garzon is going to be in pretty good shape after that one. Water's already taken care of. Now 160k to go. And we enter the, the more heavily undulated periods. We'll, we'll go times four through here just to be sure. 520 to the break. That gap's been holding pretty steady for quite a while. First climb. Four more to go, I'd say, through kind of the busier section. And a lot of shorter hills right after that. And we now begin climb number three. This one, not quite as steep. 7% is the uh, highest that we've seen. For the most part, it's only been about five. And that's three climbs down. Also at 129k, so we are going to be thinking about water again soon. I don't want Garzone getting it this time, as Peters is the one we want to protect. Uh, Vermark is the weaker man, so we'll send Vashek to get it. One climb left to go. We'll send him partway up this climb. Like now. Drop back pretty quick that way. Okay, that is the most 
undulation that you see, and we are doing just fine. 346 to the breakaway, so it did come back by about a minute and a half over that stretch. Barta with the puncture loses, is lost from the group. He was the, probably the strongest rider there, so that, that group is going to be a bit weaker without him. If we go over that little hill, there is not much undulation for the next probably 30k or so. There's some. Certainly rolls, but not like the other areas. Vashek, first one to noticeably be feeling it. He's on a minus two, just a stamina of 71. And just a mountain of 73. Not a good day in the saddle for Vashek, but he's not looking terrible. 90k to go now. Well, let's also start preparing for the race to get more intense. We'll go 77 for the time being. And with 85k to go, we're going to need water one more time to come up here in a little while. That was one of the steeper climbs that was remaining, even though it was very short. Seventy-seven k. Not sure I want Vashek to be the one getting the water at the way he's fading. Our protected three are looking very good with a high pace right now. 97 in the peloton as it's been shrinking, but it's yo-yoing. Uh, we have one more rider who's attacked off the front, Tish Benut. 30 seconds ahead, and the breakaway is just a minute beyond that. 64k and Vashek was okay enough, and the area is flat enough that I decided, sure, why not get the water. He's back up here, but he hasn't given water to everyone yet, and there you go. That's done. 57k to go. So we do not need to water, worry about water anymore. Uh, we do need to start worrying about the pace a little bit more. We'll go 79 as we're seeing some Classics Riders trying to go on the attack, but too many guys trying to go clear, so they sit up. That's two Riders who have gone off the front. Tish Benut joining the front group and Plap also off the front. Here's the highest elevation we're going to see over the last 50k right now. Not as many climbs to go the rest of the way. And now we have a group of Classics Riders like Pithy on the attack. It's ten Riders out front. Plus four. So that's the seven that were already there, joined by seven more. But they are being chased down properly. And as long as they are, I'm not worried about it. Back together. Another attack. I'm at full strength right now, but Vashek, Garzon, and Ponomar are definitely feeling it. Gonzalez is definitely feeling it, and Vermark is beginning to feel it. McKellar's still looking really, really strong. He could take over as leader if Peters struggles a little bit. Okay, and we're at that phase where it's definitely time to have the all-important maintain your position near the front. Six riders have escaped, and you can see the yo-yoing. Up to 84. Thirty-three k to go. You're definitely saving a bit of effort, and you're going to see the group start to crumble with a very, very high tempo right now. Four guys have escaped. Vashek is our furthest one back, and the reason for that is he is done. He is beginning to fade. It was for Mark he was protecting. Uh, Gonzalez will take over here shortly. By Mark in fact, we can go ahead and have him take over now. And we're seeing another attack. Let's go ahead and set an 85. So let's go 87. These are punchers anyway. So you want to get a little bit into their punchiness, but you don't want to drain the batteries. Attack by Mark Hilshi. He crashed off. Okay, we are partially in group two here. Oh, I hope it isn't too serious. Panamar and Vashek have been dropped. Garzone is about to get dropped. That's McKellar and Peters. We definitely want them to get back in contact. This little flat area here shouldn't be that hard for this group to get back up there. And Gonzalez now protecting the remark. He will need to gel up before long. 49 seconds behind, but still chasing. Lost that chase for a moment, but it's cutting down now. It's down to 40. There's a breakaway. 
and the area to bake that contact is going to be in a moment. So let's do something about it ourselves. Uh, Garzona has nothing left, so we'll just set him to auto. Uh, McKellar's going to lead out Peters and Peters. Going to chase. These are the two leaders. Our two guys at the front are not. But there you go, there's your contact. And we've got to worry about our position. And we want to follow the mark. And we've caught for mark. Alright, so Gonzalez now leading the group. 67 riders left in contention. The front two, front ten, are behind us. Uh, Parmar, Vingegaard, Alaphilippe, Jorgensen, Aliotti, all dropped. But we do see a group just ahead of us here. Both nine and five riders with 15k to go. A lot of guys just full attack from here, though. Meaning they're not going to have much left in the tank as Gonzalez bridges that gap. Gets us up there. It's a descent, so let him have it for a moment and then have Remark take over. Still six riders off the front. It could be decisive. We're hearing over the radio that a rider has given up. Take it a little easy on the uphill, but we will attack the descent. It's all auto. Ten kilometers remaining. Ten K to go. We'll catch the one, no problem. Catching the other five might be a little difficult. Gel for McKellar. And Mark now brings it forward, and this is where we're going to close that gap down a fair bit, maybe. Yes, we are closing it down. 99. 7K. Okay, on to McKellar. Mark, try to hang on if you can. Gel for Peters. We've dropped more than half of the riders here. 5k to go. Still haven't caught that front five. And you got to believe that some of those guys are just sitting on. Now it's just nine chasing, and we finally caught the man in no man's land in between. Peters, 3k. He is sprinting his sprint, setting up Peters. Peters has got to wait till the very, very end for his sprint, though. Can we catch that front five? I can't believe that we gained no ground on them, that they've stayed out front like that, so it looks like we are going to be racing for sixth place and nothing more, and that is so disappointing because I thought we had it. Pagatcher, Simmons, Pidcock, no wonder they've been able to hold us off. Bagioli, yeah, Johannesson, Peters takes sixth. McKellar gets eighth. Bogli gets ninth. Still wearing the Swiss, Swiss National Championship jersey, EF Education rider these days. Hershey only gets 13th. Eventable 14th. Roglic gets 15th. Vermark takes 16th. Mohoric is 18th. I mean, you are surrounded by really, really good riders. Pithy takes 19th. Vanderpool, 20th. Sixth is pretty impressive considering you're looking out of field where... 17, 18 out of those 20 riders are big time punchers in this database at this stage. That front five somehow held the gap though. You look at the names and you can understand why. Pagatcher has like a, a 10,000 stamina. I don't think I'm exaggerating much, right? Not much anyway. Flesh Wallone and the relentless pursuit to get a break formed continues on, meaning there's a lot of fatigue in legs already. Early on in this one, as Hoggins goes down with a crash, uh, he's off the back, so he's uh, back up at least, but we'll let him go auto until he gets back up here. Looks like the pace has lifted at least in the uh, peloton out to two minutes. So he'll come forward and get back to uh, protecting Martinez. And at 146k to go, it's still a little early, but let's get water now. Six riders ended up forming the break. Three minutes now, approaching four minutes. De Plus, uh, Albanese, Hoyes, or Hoy, uh, Arez, Kokelman, and Herigot. Uh, 
no big threats up there, so we are okay from the breakaway today. But of course, the breakaway that put us under pressure at Amstel Gold was not the original breakaway in that one. That was a late break classic style move from a whole bunch of really, really, really strong guys uh, that somehow ended up off the front at the right time and had endless amounts of stamina that they were able to keep going and not get caught before the end. Best of the rest is nice, but it's not. Not the same thing. Four and a half minutes for that break now. Inside 120k to go. Uh, for Flesh Willow, and there's definitely steeper, longer climbs than what you get with uh, Amstel Gold. So mountain rating matters a little bit more today than it did in that last race. Uh, a pretty hefty effort in the field is going to make this one a little bit tougher, I think. 94k to go. Nearly past the easy stuff. The race is going to get hard here fairly soon. And with 80k to go, I'm tempted to get water now, but we'll get it after Murdahui. After the top there. Three circuits for that. And here's that first climb of many to come. And we've already got enough pace in the group that that was felt in the legs a bit. Wasn't an easy one. as the field can split quite easily up the Murdahui. It's only 1.3 kilometers in length. The average is 9.4%, but it's the middle, 18. And then you hit 18 again. It's very steep. Huggins, Martinez, go back a bit. But that is lap one complete. The gap is widening. It's now and with 50k to go, it's time to get that water. Gonzalez on a minus four is probably the weakest man of the day. Yeah, no stamina. Go ahead and get your water. Protecting Peters, but Vashek, Vashek needs to follow Peters. So he'll have to take over. This Gonzalez will clearly be the first one out of energy. Just because of that really poor race day condition draw. And he's only got a 76 mountain today. And 65 stamina. Last time getting water, 44k to go. Two and a half minutes to that breakaway, but again, that's not a breakaway that's very threatening. I would suspect it'll come down pretty quick. Okay, water's done. Uh, let's start upping the effort. A little bit more here. Go 80 for the time being. There's a faller in the pack. A rider is Coop goes road. down. Was Coop last year that I had Coop, or, or did I have Coop in this series? Towards the beginning. I cannot remember anymore. Alright, the effort for the murder Hui, and Gonzalez needs to gel up as he's the one I don't think will be around by the top of the climb. Big acceleration too. A couple guys trying using this climb to escape a vent pole. You can see there is definitely some drifting. And Gonzalez is done. But like I said, called that one out. Knew that was coming. Okay, so Vashek. Just take over protection now. And we have six riders left as we enter the final circuit. 22k to go. Still a minute to the break. Last three riders though, or is that three new guys? No, oh, that is the original break. So we've caught the ones that tried to get off the front. Okay. Seven as we hit the next climb. This one's not as bad, 2k, but it's under 5%. Some we will form our train shortly after the cresting on this one. There's a little the saddle here, so wait until that. Huggins is going to be done, so he will not be part of this. And Ponomar. Ponomar needs to gel right now, as he's going to be the wow, leader. Huggins, it's a little late for him, but we'll go ahead and gel as well. 
and then Bashek is going to be the other one we're going to want to gel up on quite this soon. This descent's going to happen pretty quick. Breakaway's been caught. 56 riders left. Come around this corner. And now's the time. 12k. Two climbs. Huggins will go to the back. Uh, Martinez might be our best hope. A strong mountain and hills. I, mean, there's, I don't know if he's going to be strong enough, but we can try. So we'll try with Peters, Martinez, Krantz. Panamar is already near the front, so he doesn't have to go crazy here. 55 riders. Let's go 95, try to get out in front of EF. Gel. All right, we are in position. Hoggins has recovered as he, is he at the back? He is. Okay, 99 for Panamar for the moment, just to get us out front. Okay, 96 through here. It's the second climb that we really want to be set for. And Vashek takes over as Ponomar peels off. He is done. Hoggins will be done, but let's hope it can break toe behind us and leave all but a couple riders behind as we go over the top with Shelling pushing on. Gel. And Gel. Okay, there's our four guys. Hoggins is somehow returning towards the front, but Vashek pushing on. Splits the field. 32 riders now left as we make... Our final run of the Murd Hui. And Peters is looking pretty good for it. Okay. On a Kranz, he's going to climb faster. 900 meters. Let's wait just a little longer. Martinez, go ahead and go. And 98. Martinez. Oh, come on. There you go. Coming back at him. And Peters to sprint. Peters to sprint over the top. Come on. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Come on through. Come on through. He's not going to win, but come on. Let's get up there. Bogley is going to take third. We're going to get fourth. Johannesson, Pagatcher, Bogley, Peters. <laughs> gets ahead of Simmons. He gets fourth place. Bagioli, Champesson, Vanderpoel. Martinez gets ninth. So we get two guys inside the top ten. Fourth place, so close on that one working out, Peters. Mostly right time. I mean, he could have gone a few meters sooner, but the steepness, right? So once you come over that crest where you can properly sprint back, Marcus, before that crest, no it's a climb. It's a hard race. climb. So having that lead out from Martinez was great. Nearly, nearly worked off, out for us, but there's just too many strong riders, too many strong punchers that have... You know, endless amounts of energy, and we don't, even with good race day condition, we don't. Their bonuses are just extreme. It's hard to win this type of race. Close, though. That is going to do it for this episode, though. I'm Decathlon Gamer. Like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you next time. Have a good one. Be safe out there. Bye for now.